Very good afternoon, everybody. We will look at Origin today, of course. Get on board a sea and discover why it's Australia's number one choice in personal watercraft. sea is the name. My name is Anthony Maroon. Plenty to get through today. Before we do, Dragons 52, Broncos 24, Tigers 26, Panthers 6, Storm 20, Titans 14. Let's introduce you to the crew. Uh, James Triceps Hooper, welcome firstly to you, old mate. Good afternoon, Anthony the Redfern Rocket. You're looking fresh. You've had a uh, an early night and... Uh, you're just ready to go. Always have an early night, Anthony. You know that. Absolutely, especially a big game day like this. Paul Kent from NRL 360. What have you been up to, old son? Oh, not much, mate. I've just been getting on with the uh, weekend. Right. You keep. I'm not going to tell you what I've been doing, Anthony, because you like to put it out there. Well, I, I know, but I mean, it, you don't need to tell me because by the time I get here, everyone's sort of <laughs> oh. filled. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> filled in the dots. And uh, one of the greats, one of the great origin players in the NRL at the moment, uh, Aaron Woods. Stepping in for Gordon Tallis. How are you, Woodsy? Very good. Thank you, Maroon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Nelk, I know you're feeling a little bit unloved at the moment because you're going to look for a new club and everything, mate. But our hearts are always open to you. You can always ring me if you're feeling down. I appreciate it, mate. You are not bad with little gigs on the side, so I might need help soon. Oh, oh, hello, oh, cha-ching. Oh, oh, oh. There's sausages oh, on offer already, are there? It's very early in the piece. Well, wow. Woodsy. All right, boys. We've got plenty to talk about today. <laughs> Origin has come round again. Three sleeps to go. And look at this. Hoops, you wouldn't believe it. This is going to make you fall off your chair. Dane Gagai has tonsillitis. Oh, wow. Can't they find an injury scare in Queensland camp? Oh, they're just drama queens. Seriously. <laughs> Every time they go into camp, someone gets crook. Hmm. That, that we should start putting the market out on it. Stomach bug. Who it is, what it is. Oh, injury. It's ridiculous. It's, like, it's usually Dane Gagai too as well. That's yeah, the thing. It's true. He, he comes out and four. gets a man and match yeah, performance every time. Yeah. Rains it. yeah. I think that, uh, look, oh, they've always got to start sanitising up there. Because <laughs> everybody gets crook all the time. Yeah. Like, what sort of joints are they staying mm. in? Mm. Yeah, exactly. What? Oh, it's just, yeah, seriously, tonsillitis. Mm. Why, why do you think they do this, Paul? Oh, they're drama queens. Right. They get off on it. They, they think that, that uh, I think it goes back way, way back to the days when there was an injury scare and there's concerns and, and, and they use it as a bit of a rallying thing for them. Uh, come on, you know, get up for the boys, like... Trevor Gilmeister checked himself out of hospital back in the nineties to go and play, uh, and and was seriously ill. Mm. Um, and, and and did play outstanding. And did play outstanding. And it's just part of them. And and now like now they they, they cut their fingernails too short and <laughs> they're getting the doctor hurt, in. Though. That yeah, does, it does hurt. hurt, mate. They can't. Yeah, they. they um, are you they still get getting yours done at the salon? And I just bite mine down. <laughs> I just what I do is I jump in a bath and get all warm and pr- pr- like pruny and crinkly, yeah. and then they're easy to just rip off. Oh. I, yeah. Gee, that must be an experience. <laughs> 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 well, you can come around. And, you're always welcome to come around and watch. Oh. Yeah. I just bite yeah, them all off. All the hair floating to the top of your bath. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I have a shower first. I have a shower first oh, just to clean mate, things up. Come on. Um, <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, back to the game. I'm really looking forward to this game, Woodsy, because there's a lot of, lot of, lot of things I want to see. Luai and Cleary together at Origin level is one of them. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they've been the form halves competition probably for the last 18 months in the competition. Um, I think he really deserves it, Luai. And I think I think this everyone's talking that they're not sure if the game will, will suit him. I reckon he'll make it suit him. Um, he plays his own tempo. He lets Cleary control everything, and then. I think once he gets the ball off those, you know, say if you get a, a little bit of opportunity from an offload, I think Lua will, will really make the uh, Queenslanders pay. Mm, well, I hope you're right. I hope it's going to, I hope he, I hope he just plays his, his natural game. Now, Hoops, I want to ask you this one, uh, the crackdown that we've seen on foul play, all these sin binnings we've seen since Magic Round, maybe we agree that they are a necessary thing or we don't, but is anything going to change in origin? Well, if you go out and stiff arm someone in the melon, then you're guaranteed to get 10 minutes in the bin. But I think, as we always see in State of Origin, that there'll be some discretion utilised by the match officials. Mm. Look, there's always pressure on the referees in Origin games to not blow penalties. Now, for a long time, that was good. Uh, but then what started to happen is, is coaches realised that the referees aren't blowing penalties. So they then began to exploit it, stand offside, do all this stuff. And... and there will, there will be some sort of statement, I think, from the referees. They can't just sit there and put their whistle in their pocket for this game and just leave themselves in the game open mm. to claims of hypocrisy. I think that they, at some point they'll do it. I think someone will go to the bin. Uh, they won't want to do it, but I just think it's inevitable. The way the game is played, that there will be a tackle where someone has to go. Woodsy, how has it affected you, your game personally, this crackdown? 
Look, I think you're more aware when you go into a tackle. Um, before, I think I was saying to the boys off air, you normally you'd go into a tackle, try to tackle two people up high. Um, being a taller person now, if I do lean into people, my, my shoulder's going to make direct contact with the with the melon of somebody. So um, you tend to go a little bit lower now. Um, you're a lot more aware. But um, I think in origin, I think, you know, we, we should let a bit more go. It, it's one of the most, the toughest sport arenas to be involved in. And that's why we watch it. It's gladiator. You know, you want to go out there and see some big hits. Obviously, no fighting now, like the old days, but we've moved on from that. But you want to see some big hits, but you want it to see clean and fair. If there's a proper stiff arm like Hoops said straight to the melon, Mate, the bloke deserves yeah. 10. But how how is it for these blokes that are going out to play Origin for the first time? Like, because we always talk about it being the ultimate NR, the ultimate rugby league arena. What did you feel like the first time you went out to play Origin? Well, I debuted up at Suncorp Stadium, so it was a lot different to what they're probably... Oh, they're actually in Townsville this time. So they're, they're, I think there's going to be a bit of an unknown. Um, that This is the first time we've ever played up in Townsville. Mm. Um and yeah, look, we played up there in Queensland. Now uh, we all know that New South Wales don't get any calls in Origin up there, and it was complete. We I don't think we touched the ball for the first twenty minutes nearly. We were down, I think, twelve nil after twenty minutes, and that's a massive scoreline in Origin. Um, nothing went our way, and it's just one of those games. You know, you got to go out there and expect the unexpected. Um, you can't train for it. Uh, the crowd, you run out. There's there's alcohol getting poured on you by the two headed Queenslanders up there. <laughs> Um, we go to Queensland too, boys, by the way. But yeah, never I, don't, I don't really go up there that much. I normally stay this side of the water. <laughs> but um, <laughs> No, nah, but look, it, it, it's complete. It's it's very hard to expect it. I know. I remember Chucky Watmau told me to go at the front of the line as you run out. And he goes, you won't experience anything like this ever again in rugby league, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you're not playing state of origin. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so crazy to be out there running out there. Yeah, you hear all sorts of things, don't you, boys, about you can't hear each other. You can't hear the calls. I think Matty or Joey said once, he ran out there, he's running around, he looks up at the clock and it's two minutes till half time. He hasn't feel like he hasn't sort of settled into the game yet. It's crazy how hostile the crowd is. And I mean, you know, in the old days, they don't do it anymore. But the Blues bus would have to drive down Caxton <laughs> Street and past the Caxton Street Hotel. And they'd come flying out and pelt full cans wow. and scooters. <laughs> we tried to get that done in 2014, but for safety reasons, they wouldn't let us go down there. <laughs> <All right>. yeah, <laughs> well, they I'm want not, us to make the game sweet. So <laughs> I'm not surprised. Uh, but look, it's it, It's a terrific uh, cauldron. I mean, this game will be in Townsville, but um, game two will be at Suncorp. And uh, to go up there and, and listen to the raucous uh, crowd, and, and I can only imagine was he like as a player experiencing that. Um, it, it'd be the absolute best. Oh, it's it's unreal. I think you know playing in front of eighty thousand in at Stadium Australia was nothing compared to playing at I think forty or fifty two fifty two thousand yeah. up at Suncorp. It is like a it's like a box shaped field, and mate, the fans are right on top of you. And like you said, I remember I was standing at the kickoff position. I was on the dead ball line. Um, halfback, I think it was Mitchell Pierce at the time was on the try line and I was trying to say, yeah, mate, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And he just didn't turn around and acknowledge me at all because mm. that's how loud it is. And all the uh, things they call you and the, the sign language they give you, it's uh, it's not quite pleasant for an initial <laughs> yeah. It's very simple. <laughs> uh, all right, boys, what about... Uh, Are you what, going up, Anthony, for I, the game? I'm going up to do a uh, function for the uh, NRL. Excellent. Actually, yeah, so thanks, oh. Tyson, and everybody at the NRL. I'm looking forward to, to, to a little bit of that. It's a business I'm in. I've got to, uh, I've got to work. Yeah, know, so. beautiful. Oh, oh, that'll just be set up to um, be a good trip. Where are you staying? Um, You're staying at the Ville? I'm staying at the um, our producer chicken knows some pub. I'm staying at the Commonwealth or the yeah the Commonwealth was oh, it? The okay. Com- yeah, so I'm staying there. I've got to do a few other little bits and pieces while I'm up there. Just chase a few people up. Mm. Okay. So after the party at the Mad Cow. Yeah, probably go over there and see if they need my services for something <laughs> in the off season, Woodsy. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the game. I've lost my train of thought now. I'm like George Costanza. I've lost what I was going to say to you guys. So that's Origin. Let's talk about Queensland. The the keys. To Queensland winning Munster. Is it Munster? Is it Big Tino? Is it David Fafita? Who's got to have an absolute blinder? Oh, no doubt it's Munster and Harry Grant. We saw Harry, who only made a, a short, sharp cameo into the arena last year, and he just looked like he belonged in uh, that environment. So no question it'll be uh, their big game players. But as always in these big games, like the best forward pack will, will set things up. And I think what New South Wales are definitely aware of is that in game three last year, they were bullied. They were outbashed. Uh, the Queensland forwards were hungrier than them. And I think, I'm sure that that will have been raised in camp over the last week. Look, right. The one thing that Queensland always do, which New South Wales never quite figure out, is they pick a defensive team. They pick a team to defend their way to victory. And they've got guys obviously in there like Munster and that who can create. 
But the secret to winning last year's series is, like, Gordon, I was talking to Gordon about it, and he said, mate, you blokes never get it. And I said, well, what's that? And he, had, he said, New South Wales always pick a scoreboard team. And everyone looks at the team and goes, oh, yeah, he, he, he's got plenty of points in him. He's got points in him. He said, Queensland pick a team to defend. And mm. that, you know, that's why you know, Cape Wall was in the centres last year. Yeah. And was outstanding. Yeah. Mm. But just went out and did his job, mate. Yeah. And, and defensively, they just helped each other out. And, and, and that's how they won the series, just by, by actually defending their way. Like, it wasn't, a, it wasn't the worst Queensland team ever. Like, the, the record for that's still the 95 side. It, it was a, on paper. They had, you know, blokes who hardly played any first grade games getting picked. Mm. This this team had some good players in it last year and and once again this year, but they just go in with that mentality that they're going to fight in every second of every minute. They're going to be in the competition. They're going to keep themselves in the competition. And New South Wales, I think, get discouraged at different times when, yeah, they look up and it's only, you know, eight, six or something and they, they think they should be ahead 18, six and... For some reason, it's like they get frustrated and they've got so much points in them that they begin to push it. And, and that's where it's... Yeah, we always self-implode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and whereas Queensland just say, mate, the game's won the 80th minute, so let's just make sure we're in shape to win it when we get to there. That's so true. They play the long game, Kenny. Yeah. We, we go for the big play every time. And, yeah. you know, even when I was there, I know there was times we, we were in complete control of the game. And then Cameron Smith would put a, a you know, we, we had him under the pump for the whole set of six or, or probably on play three, he puts mm. a kick from his own 20 metre line. Mm. You see Thurston and Cronk just chase their backside off and they're tackling us on our own 10 metre line and mm. we can never recover from it. Yeah. You know, when we've had the whole momentum for the first 20, 30 minutes of the game and then bang, they score and then we're sitting back behind a trial and going, what, what's happened? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's fascinating that just the mentality of the two states and how we sort of settled into this into their personalities. The Queensland origin personality and the New South Wales origin personality are two different animals. Uh, and that's why Queensland regularly have upset victories because they just they just stay in the game. As Woodie said, they play the long game. They, they, they don't get discouraged. You know, I was talking to Iken one day and, and he said, mate, we never use the word pressure. We're never under pressure. He, he said, we, we, you just talk about... Um, yeah, just getting through the next set. That that's all they do. They never actually acknowledge that they're under pressure and even when it's going against them, it's like just just stick it out. It'll turn and uh it'll come back our way soon. And so their mentality is to just knuckle down and get through it. But they never they never feel pressure. They never use the word pressure. It's just that's just the way they are they are. And whereas you know, like yeah, what did you say? The blues in the same situation, they try to change it quickly rather than just see through it and because they try and change it sometimes it works but a lot of times it doesn't and as as he said the, the game goes boys all right start with you hoops i'm going to ask all three of you who wins in townsville given that the game is in townsville uh the support base is going to be very one-sided who wins i'll say the blues by one by one yep. someone's going to kick a field goal nathan cleary will kick a field goal oh that's very specific there hoops so you, you don't want to have a, a dozen steamed dumplings on that, do you? <laughs> because that's very specific. <laughs> right, I will have a dozen right, steamed well, dumplings. So if, if New South Wales don't win by a field goal kicked by Nathan Cleary, you're buying me a dozen steamed dumplings. No mm. problem, Anthony. What about you, Paul? I think Queensland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, for no reason. I, 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 there's no logic to it, but they just seem to win. You know? And it's in Townsville. I think Townsville is going to bring something pretty special. I, I haven't been to that that. Uh, stadium that's there, but uh, by all reports, Unreal. Yeah, it's one of the best stadiums we've played at. Yeah, it's a cauldron like Suncorp where they're right on top of yeah, you. Yeah, it's more of like a horseshoe. So right. there's one section of it where you can see over the city. Okay. So the, and the rest is just like Suncorp, mate. Right. Yeah. So, so it's going to be intense. It'll be, and they're right on top of you. Yeah. <laughs> and and look, the the more the more north you go in Queensland, the more feral they get. Yes, that is so true. <laughs> You got any plans uh, on going up there soon? <laughs> no, <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just think they will just be, look, they'll be pissed at the eyeballs and just <laughs> giving it to New South Wales. I think it'll be a very unique experience, Right. that crowd. Woodsy, what about you? Well, firstly, I'm absolutely filthy that we're taking the game up there. Right. It should be in Sydney mm-hmm. because we can't go back to back games in Queensland. It's a disgrace. But I reckon New South Wales by seven. By mm. seven? I'm going full goal with Hoops, okay. by seven. Right. 
And they'd, clearly kick it to you. have a dozen steamed yeah. dumplings with you too. Yeah, no yeah, worries, okay. let's do it. Uh, <laughs> all right, boys. What do you like to put on the steamed dumpling? Oh, mate, I'll you just... Put a bit of hot chilli yeah, sauce. I'll put a little or... bit of uh, just the old school soy sauce on them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, I can eat like I 15, 20 of them. you Tabasco sometimes when you go to those joints. <laughs> <laughs> Who Is told that you that? <laughs> huh? Is that true? Well... You know, if, mate, you know what I'm like. No, I, <laughs> I take my own. I take my own Tabasco. Who has Tabasco on steamed dumplings? You don't know what you're doing, mate. I've tried to mentor you. Do, do I need to put you through some sort of a deportment school? Probably. It hasn't done very much. No. <laughs> Welcome back to it. Yeah, we're uh, taking a bit of time to talk origin today, too. Thanks to Sea-Doo. Uh, get on board of Sea-Doo and discover why Sea-Doo is Australia's number one choice in personal watercraft. When are we doing those Sea-Doo ads again? We did I'm the big ready to CD. roll when you are, Anthony. Yeah, I better look into that. Yeah. Uh, boys, let's uh, let's uh, get straight to the phone here because we've got one of New South Wales' finest on there waiting to chat with us. One of the nicest guys in our game, Jake Trebojevic. Welcome to the Sinbin, old mate. How you going, guys? Fantastic. Before we get to Origin, hey, uh, just one for the Manly fans. Congratulations to you guys. A, a slow start to the season, but up into equal sixth. Yeah, no, it's... Um... It's been a great turnaround, obviously. Um, yeah, really, really tough start, pretty disappointing, and then um, it was obviously great getting my brother back, able to able to turn it around. So it's given us a bit of confidence. So hopefully we can um, go right at the back end of the year. The uh, Origin camp, mate. There's been no uh, outbreaks of tonsillitis or anything, has there? No, no, no. It's been um, all good, all, all good, good at the moment. What what about, what do you make of poor old Dane Gagai getting tonsillitis out of Queensland? Oh, geez, I didn't even know he had it. Oh, <laughs> that. They've, always, they've always got something wrong with them, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's the first I've heard of it. Obviously, um, I'm sure he'll be fine to play. Obviously, he's, um, he always goes good in the origin, so he'll, he'll, he'll be fine to play come Wednesday, I'd say. How has the, how has the week been, uh, Jake? You've obviously been a part of the New South Wales setup for a number of years now. How do you rate this camp? No, it's been really good, mate. It's been, um, obviously, they're always enjoyable on the food. They're pretty relaxed. Um, we train pretty hard, but then... Away from footy, it's really chilled, really relaxed, and we have a good time. It's been great being at Coogee, and then we got to go home for the weekend and back into camp today, and then um, we head up to Townsville tomorrow. So it's been um, been really good build-up, really exciting, and I think everyone's just ready to go. Jakey, mate, you said you've been training out. All I've seen on the TV is you've been playing golf, mate. <laughs> you still have... practicing that golf swing? <laughs> yeah, everywhere, mate. You know me. <laughs> How's the, uh, the old food going? You still staying in the sauna most of the time in camp or what? Yeah, you know me and buffets, would you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Most nights in the sauna, yeah. No head noise? <laughs> no, always head noise. Always. <laughs> hey, Jake, one of the um, one of the flashpoint moments of last year's series was when your captain, James Tedesco, knocked out and uh, Joy Arrow went over and, and picked him up when he was concussed. Has that been raised at all amongst the playing group and by the coaches? No, nah, no, nah, it hasn't, mate. Um, we've just been... Focusing on trying to turn it around. Obviously, it was a disappointing result last year. How how we lost, and any time you lose, it's just you know not good enough. So we want to we want to turn that around. We haven't talked about what happened. Obviously, it's been brought up by other people, but we're just focusing on trying to trying to turn around what happened last year, not looking too far back, and just focusing on ourselves. Freddie said uh, the other day that the thing that disappointed him last year was those two incidents in the game. One where Tedesco got knocked out, and and when he got picked up and thrown down again that, that no New South Wales players reacted to it and there was another point in the game where one of them just uh, stepped over Nathan Cleary and, and again none of the New South Wales players came to help him which is I, I got the impression when I saw that last year that the players were a little bit I suppose uh, uncertain a bit hesitant given the the, the the rules now where you're sin bin for, for throwing a punch and all that which has taken that aggression out of it but how do you so how do you fix that and and, and and sort of stay within the rules. Is, is there? Have you talked about a, a strategy or how you're going to handle those situations if if Queensland start to try to bully you a little bit and and it, it does come time to to sort of up the ante a bit? Yeah, well, it is a tough one. As you said last year, we probably did get bullied a little bit, you know, and we didn't didn't, didn't come out on top. But I guess as, as you said, with all the sin things that and that sort of thing, you can't do anything stupid because you're going to leave let your team down. So I don't know. I'm not really sure how you go about it. Obviously. Probably just, I don't know, the old fact, just to push and shove. I, I really don't know. Yeah, and um, just got to try and um, come out on top There, there is when a, you're actually playing. There is, too, I think, the thing that people overlook, too, Jake. You, know, you probably shouldn't be uh, promoting this, but it, if you, you get, the rule is now if you throw a punch, you get, you get sin binned. So I, I'd imagine the rule would be 
yeah, well, if, if you're going to throw a punch, throw, throw a heap of them. <laughs> Make sure they're <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you land. If you're going to throw one, throw one. <laughs> you, yeah, don't like, slap. Like, yeah, ne, yeah don't hit, don't, but if you're going to throw one, throw a plenty. And, mate, he'll have to defend himself. Like, no one's just going to stand and keep wearing it. Yeah. So when he throws one back, he's off too. So, <laughs> so at least that oh. way it's one for one. I'll be honest with you, I have not thought about that one bit, and I can't see myself throwing too many punches, to be honest. But, um, yeah, um, I don't know. If you put it that way, I guess that's right. I'll, yeah. I'll give you a tip. If you throw one, throw plenty. Okay. <laughs> right, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <catchy>. <laughs> uh, but, that, look, it is an unusual one. And, and, and when teams are trying to intimidate other teams, that, that element's been taken out of it. But there was certainly a, an edge that Queensland brought to the game last year uh, that I think New South Wales uh, put them on the back foot a little bit. And yeah. so that's the, the challenge is out there for you, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. And, you know, as, as I said, it was um, extremely disappointing. They bullied us a bit and they got on top of us physically. So I guess it's about finding a way to, to win that during the game, sort of thing, not, not doing anything outside the rules, just during the game, in the, in the contest, in the transition and grind, just trying to come out on top physically, which is going to be a big test because obviously they're a great side and we've seen, seen them do it so well last year. And, and Jakey, with the, with the camp this year, how's, it be, how's the feel been? Obviously, under Freddie, it's the first time that he's coming off a series loss. How, how has he responded to that? Yeah, well, obviously it was disappointing and he wants to turn it around. He, and when we train, we train really hard, Woodsy, but it's always it's always pretty relaxed. He's a pretty relaxed guy and we, we do, you know, lots of different stuff which keep everyone pretty chilled. But when, when it's time to train, we train hard and we've talked about where we went wrong and that sort of thing. And, you know, we've got to turn it around because, you know, like losing's not good enough. And, um, yeah, we definitely don't want to do that again. What's the feeling, mate, of going to uh, Townsville to play this game? Oh, it's going to be tough, but, you know, I'm just trying to try not to put negative energy into it, you know, just try and be positive about it. It's going to be a great challenge. And, um, you know, imagine if we went up there and got the job done, it'd be, be pretty cool. It'd be, you know, a great moment. So just try, try not to focus on how hard it'll be and just trying to put good energy into it. It's going to be a, you know, same size footy field and that sort of thing. So if we, if we go up there and play well and do our job, we'll be all right. Jaggy, before you go, mate, you know me, I like to look after my friends. Uh, Woodsy's a little bit too embarrassed to ask. Would you have a word of Desi for him about next year, mate, if you get a chance? <laughs> Please, Jake, you need something. I've got nothing there. I'll, I'll get on to him, mate. I'll get on to him. Wouldn't mind running off you. turbo as well. Good on you, mate. He'll, he'll, he said he'll, he'll kick you back. He'll clip you something if you get him a deal. Good on you, mate. Oh, good done. luck on Wednesday Thanks, night. Cobra. Thanks for having us. Yeah, good on you. Jake Trebojevic joining us from New South Wales Origin Camp. We had to let him go there because he, they told him we could have we could have him till 145, but he might be learning the TV way is to always say where you'll be next so that you can get away when you want to get away. Do you know what I mean? Like he's gone into that saying, I've got to be done by 145 mm. so that he would be done by 145, whether somebody told him that or not. Do you see where I'm coming from? I think it's completely irrelevant. So. Well, no, it's not irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. It's also as clear as mud, the way yeah. you explained it. And it's fascinating for the listeners. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure they're riveted yeah. by that detail. Well, all I'm saying is maybe he didn't really have to go, but he's gone now anyway, I think. Let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll have a little well, bit you, of fun. You're just giving it to everyone when, they, when they can't defend you. I know, I know, already. I know. Yeah. You yeah. waited well, to Jake nice hung up and hopped into it. He's the nicest yeah. bloke yeah. in rugby league. Yeah, yeah, he is. I know. Yeah, I know. Right. But he can't defend he's himself. I know, exactly, mate. <laughs> Boys, we're going to lighten things up a bit with our State of Origin quiz, which is coming up next on Triple M. Welcome back to it, everybody. Of course, we're talking a lot about Origin. We'll broadcast Origin live for you this coming Wednesday night. So get ready for that. Dragons 52, Broncos 24, Tigers 26, Panthers 6, Storm 20, Titans 14. Time for this. Welcome to Maroons Trivia Night. Yes, well, I thought because... Um, you, Woodsy, are an origin legend. You two are some of Australia's more esteemed uh, sporting journalists. We would do um, um, uh, the... You're putting me off there. What are you looking at, Hoops? You're looking at the back. Yeah, I was just looking at the weird photos on the back of your piece of yeah, paper. Because I, well, I just recycle paper. See? I so you I, could... I thought you'd normally tea leaf it. <laughs> I tea leaf it, then I recycle it. <laughs> so I use it, then I put it back in the printer and print on the other side. But it's more for the um, environment because I could only just tea leaf some more if it was about the cost. <laughs> so this is all about um, this is all about origin, state of origin. Okay, got it. Boys, are you ready? So um, does Woodsy know how to play? Yeah, Woodsy, your name is your buzzer, Aaron. Uh, yeah, oh Woodsy, or whatever Woody. you like, yep. Aaron or Woodsy. Sweet. Um, just see if it works, Chester. Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now if you go with Woodsy. Don't go I'll go with, Woodsy. I'll go Woodsy. All right. Easy. Yeah. Okay. So we've had a look at some of the stats here. Over the, the 18 months we've been doing this, Paul's won it on 61 occasions. Ooh. Gordy's won it on eight. And 
hoops, you've won it twice. <laughs> so see how you go today. You've only got a win today and you're halfway Beautiful. to catching up to him. Your name is your buzzer. It's all questions about origin. Uh, in 2017, a Knights player won the Wally Lewis medal. Who was it? Woods. Yes. Gay guy. Oh, Woodsy. Oh. So you went with Woods in the oh, end. Woods, yeah, Woods. So oh. Last name. Okay. <laughs> One nil to you, mate. You're going good. Question number two. What year did New South Wales first win Four. a three? Yes. 85. One all. You see the pattern here, hoops? You haven't got <laughs> one right yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this year's Origin game, who is number 16 for New South Wales? Woods. Yes. Has. Two, one, zero. Oh, oh, look at this. Woods, you only need this one. For the game. Yes. And you're halfway in total <laughs> overall scores to hoops. Yeah. <laughs> Come back next week, you'll catch him. All right. Here we go. Who was last year's, be on your buzzer here, hoops, right? Who was last year's player of the Hoople. series? Yeah. Cameron Munster. Yeah. Nah, well done. 2 1 1. Okay. Uh, in 1987, a game was played in Paul, L. Yes. Los Angeles. And that is incorrect. Because. Oh. Oh. The question was going... Now, you're back to zero. The question was going to be, in 1987, a game was played in Los Angeles. Who scored three tries? But does it... Well, well, Connor. No, now you're minus two. Oh, and, what's that buzzer off? You, that's off a that's, TV show. Yeah, that's off Sale of the Century. <laughs> uh, I took it off an old VHS yeah, we had home. Dale Shearer. Oh, Dale Shearer. Shearer that's Dale right. Shearer. It's two Woodsy, zero New Paul. South Wales won that game, though. Did they in... in L.A., LA. Yeah. yeah. Because that way Stella got stuck in the... Yes. That's the best. <laughs> couldn't, break the, <laughs> couldn't break through the banner. That's right, <laughs> yes. I've done that before too. So. Uh, mm. Okay, boys. Um, all right, now... What's your, the scores, please, Anthony? Two to, two to Woodsy, one to you, none to Paul, right? The next question will be, uh, who was the first ever New South Wales coach? Paul. Paul. Terry Fernley. And that is wrong. You are oh, now yeah. minus one. It's Ted Blossom. Oh, so you've got to get four right to win. Oh, so that's all right. That's, hey. here's, a, here's a stat. We haven't got four questions left. <laughs> 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 uh, we do have. We do have. Uh, we'll repeat a couple if we have to. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, who, was, quiz. who was the first ever Queensland coach? Paul. Yes. Oh, Paul. Oh. He's gone to minus. Is it John McDonald? Yes. Oh, no. yes. Right, you're back to w- zero. <laughs> All right, okay, here we go. Who was the first ever Queensland captain? Paul. Paul. Arthur Beaton. And it's 2-1. Woods, you only need one. <laughs> All right, you've got to stay strong here. It's too quick. Okay. What's the nickname of the Queensland origin legend, Chris Close? Pops. Paul. Oh. Oh. Two off. He's come back. <laughs> Is it you two or one? I'm two. Right. Two, two, zi- one. <laughs> oh, <hoops. laughs> Okay. You got enough questions there or what? I have. I've just got to turn the page. Uh, playing in the first game ever, New South Wales, what New South Wales origin player had the nickname Albert? Paul. Yes. Oh, Craig Young. Oh, and he's come back. <laughs> too quick. He's come back. <laughs> wow. He took the scenic route, but he got there in the end. <laughs> I tell you what, mate, that is the stuff. That's a, that is an origin level win. That That's was absolutely fantastic. Right. What I'm going to do is we're going to organise you to have a corporate box at um, Townsville mm. for right. the game. We'll right. fly you up there. I thought you were going to say <laughs> Redfern for South Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the Waterloo Waratahs Grand Final. <laughs> so congratulations to you. You have won, um, and again, you've lost, old mate, Hoopsie. No worries, mate. That's all right. I'll uh, have your quizzes. But that'll be back next week. And as I say, Origin will be back uh, same time on Wednesday night. As we always call Origin, make sure you're here for that. Just looking for a couple of little tidbits that we could do just to um, kill a couple of moments here. Did anybody watch the Storm Titans game last night? I know you all did. And the Storm had a win, 20 points to 14, Woodsy. But I know that Titans had so many chances at the end to win the game. Yeah, I thought they were unlucky in the end to lose the game, the Titans. Uh, they played some pretty good footy. Uh, probably took him about 50 minutes to get going. But once, you know, Remus Smith got 10 in the bin, I thought they had some opportunities, but they couldn't capitalise on it. So, um, mate, it's a credit to the Storm side. They've had, I think, six or seven blokes out. Mm. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago, they had nearly the whole spine out. Mate, they just keep rolling on. It, it's, you know, for a, for a side like Cronulla, I just get frustrated all the time because, mate, we we got to play with a full-strength squad and we still struggle to win. They, mm. They're they just backing it up each yeah. week, year after year. It's just incredible what they do down there. Um it is a fair achievement. Like the fact that it's essentially, it's not a reserve grade side, but it's nowhere near their number one lineup. You look at Penrith Friday night at Leichhardt and 
the fact that uh, you know they had six players out and weren't able to get the job done, whereas the Storm, they just continue to find ways yeah. to win. They did get a couple of headaches out of that game. There's a couple of blokes uh, been hit with charges by the match review committee. Remus Smith's yeah. looking at two weeks mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a high shot and Nelson Asofa Solomon is looking at one week for did, a contrary conduct charge. Did you hey. see his hit last night? Mm. Yeah. On Jamin Jolly? Yeah, he oh. Yeah. Oof. Ouch. Oh, he really <laughs> didn't miss him. Thanks to Joe Wallace for the but hospital ball. Really, really, <laughs> though, Woodsy, they had their chance, the Titans, at the end there. They just took some really dumb options Blake's not passing it or, you know. <laughs> you just want to rip into the No, tires, I don't. don't. I just want to keep matters pertinent to rugby league on the agenda. But we'll take a break. No, you want to put the slipper. Declare your interest here. I don't have any interest. You've got to dog in this fight. <laughs> no. You love yeah. putting the slipper into the no, gold No, I don't. I mean, you if do. you... I can't believe you're going to buy an apartment up there. Who told you that? Oh, there's just a little bit of talk on the street. <laughs> you won't be allowed up there, mate, if you mate, keep this car up going. I couldn't afford a caravan up there. <laughs> have you seen the prices up there? Uh, thank God Rex Airlines started up so I can fly there for 50 bucks. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to do hour two. I call BS, the halfway report for uh, all the NRL teams, how good or bad they're going. It's all on the way as Triple M rocks the footy. Welcome back to it. And uh, just a couple of little notes here to get through. We've got uh, Paul Kemp. We've got James Triceps Hooper. We've got Aaron Woods from the Sharkies filling in today. Lots and lots of good feedback on the uh, tweets about you today, Woodsy. Um, That's a first. And uh, well, we get hammered on Twitter. This this one says, um, love, club. <laughs> love listening to you on Triple M. Your mates from Grandviews. What's Grandviews? Is that the... That's the bowling club just down the road. Right. You, you go there a bit, do you? Yeah, don't mind right. going down there, mate. You play a bit of uh, barefoot bowls here? Yeah, or? barefoot bowls. They've got a, a good little section out the back to watch a couple of horses run around. Right. Okay. Yeah, Beautiful. it's not too bad of a joint. Okay, we'll have to go there with you one day. Yeah, come up, mate. You might have a function up there too. They, they do get a few up there. Mm. Oh, oh, now you've got him interested. Oh, <laughs> look at his eyes light up. The lips, look at the eyes light up. Look at his eyes light up. He'll be all over mate. that like a greyhound oh, on a bowl of money. topside bits. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take a few. I'll, we'll talk about that later, Woodsy. What did you want to say, Hoops? There's a little bit of breaking news. Uh, Matt from collaroy has been in touch with the program. Right. And just an update on Uncle Pat, who obviously, obviously suffered that hairline fracture mm-hmm. of the jaw. Yep. Uh, in that trivia incident with yourself. Anthony, I don't know if you heard the news, but Uncle Pat didn't make it. He mentioned you in his final moments. Uncle Pat was a man who struggled to forgive, so it's fair to say those final words were riddled with expletives that I'd never heard him say before, or to be honest, I thought he'd never even know, but they were in perfect context. I urged him to forgive you, but he is uncompromising. I respected him for that. Two things. Firstly, could you attend the wake and put on some trivia like you did at mum's funeral? Yeah. Same fee is fine. <laughs> second, second, <laughs> secondly, I'm looking for a caterer and here you're an expert in this area. Yours in loss, Matt from Colorado. Yeah, look, no worries, Matt. I, your Uncle Pat, he, as I say, he was a pestosaurus, <laughs> but I'm happy to uh, come along to his wake. If there's a quid in it, you know that. I didn't know the man that well. And um, you've got plenty to part with. Now, boys, we are going to have a look at a, uh, bit of, have a little bit of a halfway through the season wrap. Okay, we're halfway through the season. Origin's just about to kick. It's a great time to be part of the rugby league scene. And uh, let's have a look at the teams that are... Uh, that are uh, making it so far. Lots of the experts would say hoops that it's it's developing into a two horse race, and perhaps it's hard to argue with uh, the performances we're seeing from Penrith and Melbourne. Yeah, I think most people concur on that, Anthony. Look, perhaps uh, uh, Parramatta or Souths, um, if they were to go on a run and uh, peak in September might be able to mount some sort of challenge and cause an upset on the day. But otherwise, if you're going on current form, those two sides are in blistering touch and it looks as though it'll be a repeat of last year's grand final. I think that absolutely. Yep. There's been um, excuses for a couple of other teams. The Roosters obviously have gone through a horrific injury run uh, and are really, I think, held together well given the injuries they've got. But I do think that they uh, they went beyond the tipping point, the Roosters. They've just lost too many now. Mm. So I don't think that they can make a run. Look, the fact is, Penrith play a style of footy that no other team is capable of playing. I think the only team that's capable of stopping it is Melbourne. Yeah. So uh, because of their defensive structures. So I, so I see that this grand final... I, I can't see anyone really jumping out of the pack. Maybe South, if they get on a bit of a run, can go. But South aren't showing enough week to week to do to do what it. Manly, Kenny, if Tommy can stay fit. 
Yeah, oh, look, I, th- I think, look. They're getting I, I, Siren and back they're, soon too. Yeah, no, Shostas they are. off the charts. Yeah, no, they're a good side, but I, I, they're still not the the class of yeah. Melbourne or or uh, Penrith. Mm. Uh, but they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah, they, they certainly got the potential to, to hurt you in the finals, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if you're if you underestimate them going into a game, Tommy Turbo can just turn on like in in a ten to fifteen minute space of footy, and then you're down by three or four tries. Um, mm. And like you said, hoops before Schuster, he's just playing out of his skin in the back row. Um, you know, they've still got the the old heads in in Cherry Evans and four and controlling the ship. Um, probably the only position that they probably lack to the big side is probably hooker. You know, they, they've lost um, Manasi Fainu for the whole season. He hasn't been able to play. And then when Coruscant went to, to Penrith a couple of years ago, that's probably the only position that they're, they're light on. But I think they can match it with the best side. You know, Jake Chavorovic is probably one of the best middles in the game. Um, you know, Marty Taupo on his day as well. Josh Alloway's been injured. And then obviously uh, Curtis Siren's come back from injury soon. So he creates a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a headache for Des on the, on the edge there now. I was wrapped for Jake when he made the origin side because it was a flat start to the year for the Seagulls. And you can just see in the sheds beforehand, during games, and then afterwards, how much it means to him. Like, he gets oh, so devastated well, by, was, by, by not winning. I think he's always going to make origin. He's never had a bad origin game. You know, he, obviously, the the club form with Manly at the moment, you know, that, that, oh, sorry, at the start of the season wasn't, wasn't what he wanted it to be. But, you know, Queensland always picks sides... You know they don't care how their club form is. They know they can if they can do the job in Origin level. They've done it before. They always pick him, and that's something Jakey. He like he's got the best tackle tech in the game. I think last year in the game in Sydney, he flew out of line on their ten meter line, forced a massive error, and it just changed the momentum of the game. He does things other blokes can't do. So he'd be my first up pick all the time. I love the way he folds blokes. Mm. His mm. tackling technique oh, it's is yucky. Is old school, yeah. but yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Boys, in that you're talking about Manly there, Woodsy, and you mentioned Josh Schuster, which got which got me to the next question, which is who do you think's been the best rookie of the year? Because obviously Sam Walker st- does stand out, and the so does Field. Yeah, Reese Walsh, crack but field. but Josh Schuster as well. Well, he's in there. Dane Laurie at the yep. West Tigers mm-hmm. is another one. Look, you'd have to say I, I'd go on what we've seen so far. There's a struck match between Walker and Reese Walsh at the Warriors. Yeah, look, I'd probably, if it was probably four or five weeks ago, I would have said Walker was a mile ahead. Walsh has just come out of nowhere. I, I don't off. know why Brisbane yeah. let him go, but, mate. Stuff up. Mate, the, the, the things this bloke's been doing on the field, they've played him at 5'8", you know, fullback. He debuted against Melbourne, uh, down in Melbourne on Anzac Day. That's a massive, massive game. And, and he went out there and played like a, he's played 100 first grade games. The, these kids these days, they don't have no fear. It's not they don't get nervous for any game and they, whether they do a mistake in the game, they don't, they don't care. Like they, they just carry the divot. Yeah, they, you know, some blokes you've seen play, that'll go straight in their shell and they won't play any more footy. Mate, these guys, they, they throw that much shape, and if it doesn't come off, boom, they'll do it again and again and again, and you'll be just, mate, I'm in awe of them. It, it, we played against the Roosters. I think it was uh, Walker's second or third game, yeah, that's and right. we peppered him early on. You know, we got out to a good lead, and then the second half he sets up two tries and scores one yeah. himself. Couldn't believe it. Mm. It's filthy on him. <laughs> Given boys that the who uh, do you like Kenny out of the rookies? Oh, it's a struck match between them. I, I think Sam Walker was a revelation when he came in, uh, and Walsh. He's just look the fact that they've moved two of us a Sheck to the wing to accommodate him at fullback mm. speaks for itself. Mm. Uh, yeah, he's magnificent. And so, two of us a Sheck did that himself too. Yeah, like, that wasn't the coach's decision. He went mm. to the coach and said that. Mm. The emergence of these blokes um, vindicates the change to the six again rule because previously coaches were often reluctant to debut teenagers, especially like Sam Walker could ride track work at Randwick or Warwick <laughs> Farm. He's, he's, you, you played against him. There's like, he's, There's he's not much tall, but yeah. he's very lean. He's still got to put some uh, weight on. We might have to get him into the house of almost pain yeah, with you, I'll look after him. Anthony, but <laughs> I, I love the way that coaches are now prepared to give these young blokes a crack. And I think that the changes and adjustments to the rules are a big part of it. Uh, given that the team that's coming last and the team that's coming second last both have uh, newer coaches, is there a coach under pressure? I know a lot's gone wrong at the Raiders, but you guys believe that uh, that Ricky's as safe as they get. Do you think there are any coaches that stand out? And, and again, given the fact that there are a lot of new coaches this year. Baz is safe. Look, people point the finger because the Bulldogs have only won one game. But if they're going to spear another coach it's just going to be groundhog day uh and they'll be anchored to the bottom of the table forever they need to recruit some more players they're actively in the market at the moment they missed out on toby rudolph uh 
they're still very much chasing Brandon Smith. If they can't get him, I dare say they'll go for another hooker. They got Ado uh, Car coming next year. Matt Burton. Burton yeah, so what a there's a couple of good buys there. Uh, so I, I think there's no pressure on Baz. I think the Bulldogs management at the moment realise that the last thing they need to do, do is start getting jittery around getting rid of a coach. Yeah, I don't think there's any coach under nah. pressure. There's too many new ones, Paul. Yeah, well, look, look the, the thing is, like, people like <laughs> Trent <did> Barrett. Last. <laughs> yeah, Trent Barrett is got to, he's got to rebuild the club. You can't do that overnight. The Bulldogs have acknowledged that. that they're aware of that. So all they want to see is some sort of positive move, which I think they are seeing. The results aren't quite there at the moment, but certainly the recruitment's come along okay for a club that uh, hasn't recruited really well at all. Um, I can't figure out. I'm still waiting for Canterbury. This is supposed to be now that all the all the uh, the salary caps supposed to be fixed. Now mm. they all blamed on on Des when he was there, uh, but still they've just got they're just letting players go that they shouldn't be losing. And I, I think they're a club that's really um, they, they've got to understand where they're at and how long it's going to take to get out of that situation because they they've really dropped the ball there for a bit. And one one or two bad years can put you back five years. Mm. And I think that's what's happened to the dogs. And, and, and Brisbane, I, I think, is still in free fall. Yeah, well, this is what I was going to ask you now, boys. Hoops, I'll start with you again. The Broncos are in 15th position. They've won three games, so they're a couple of games off the bottom. In your opinion, are they worse than last year, the same as last year, or a little bit better than last year? No, I think people who are saying that uh, this side is a is a worse side than the one that Anthony Seabold had have been drinking the Kool-Aid. Like, right. I think Kevin Walters has made improvements with his team. Um, he's shown that he's prepared to take risks in terms of selections. Like he's chopped and changed his halves on numerous occasions, trying to find exactly what he's looking for at the moment. Um, he's going with Albert Kelly. I know they weren't great against the Dragons. Mm. Like they obviously had 50 put on them by the Dragons. But I still think that Kevy, given the circumstances and the mess that he inherited... He's doing a decent job. All right. What yeah, about... I like what he's doing there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think they're a club that's that's really lost its way. The the Broncos' DNA is officially dead. It's no longer there. So all this harking back to previous generations and all that, the, the Broncos have got to realise that they're not those Broncos. This is a different club, and they need to start from the ground up. And I think, you know, Donaghy's going in there now as the CEO. He's trying to turn things around. Kevy, I like what he's doing. The fact that he is moving players around, people sort of get a little bit concerned about the chopping and changing, but he's basically saying you, your job's not safe unless you're doing the job. Mm. And I think that's a, a that's a positive. Players know if they play well, they'll be there. If they don't, there's a chance they won't. And the day, you know, I, I, we, we go through this change in the game where coaches like to have faith in their players, and even when they're playing poorly, they, they keep playing them. The days when you used to have reserve grade and you drop down the reserve grade and the bloke playing good in reserve grade had come up, they don't they don't happen anymore. But Kevy's sort of a bit of a throwback to that era where he's saying, "Well, mate, you didn't do the job, so I'm going to I'm going to look for someone else to see if he can do it." And that's what he's been doing, particularly in the halves. And I, I think it's I, I you know I, I applaud it. I think it's actually getting a bit of results now. Adam Reynolds will be a great pickup for him. Like mm. When he arrives next year, if he can maintain Massive. injury free for oh. most of the season, they've they've got. Like there's enough there in that roster. They'll make a couple of other subtle changes. They're on the hunt for a fullback. They're being linked to Dufty now, which I think they are having a look at because they missed out on Nico Hines, who's signed with Cronulla. Uh, but th th there's still enough in that footy side. If they can add a couple other class players to the roster, they can quickly be back in contention. Well, I think what Kenny said is good, but you should have a fear of getting dropped. That's what part of it is. It's not your jersey. It's, mm. it's the Brisbane Broncos jersey. You're just wearing the number. Mm. I remember when I first came to first grade, you know, talking about Tim Sheens before, if, if you played, if you didn't do what he wanted you to do, then you're going straight back to reserve grade or 20s. It's as simple as that. You should have that fear factor there. It's it's not pressure. It's just keeping up the standards of what, what the team want. Yeah. And that's what you, you go into a meeting at the start of the year, you got goals and you want to set all these goals. Well, they're the goals that have come from within. It's not like they come from someone else. We, as a team, you've sort of set those goals and they're the standards you need to set to. Mm. Mm. So there's no fear there. Like it's sorry, the fear should be you getting dropped from not living up to the team standards. Mm. Yeah, well, it's it's part of professional footy, isn't it? Well, yeah, we're always it's 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 the game we play. Uh, obviously, you're not going to play the best footy every week, but if you can have your good and, and bad games close to each other, 
like as in the standard of them, so not so so yeah. far apart. Mm. Then you're not going to get a drop. They understand, obviously, you're going to be down some weeks, but you need to be preparing every week like it's your like it's your last game. That's the same thing that Triple M management often say to Anthony Mays. <laughs> <laughs> if you can just get the difference between his best performances <laughs> and his worst performances more yeah. than even keel. Well, they've given up. Mate, they've given up even trying, I think. <laughs> hey, boys, um, you mentioned Dufty there. I want to get to Dufty, but the other the other player that there was talk around was the Broncos and Josh Hodgson. Now, on the back of Adam Red's, Re- Reynolds, he'd be good, wouldn't he, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah look, I... I think that'll happen, right? There's a lot of politics going on behind the scenes with that. He's on big money uh, at Canberra, but most certainly uh, there's a divide there. There's a big divide there between, I think, between Josh Hodgson uh, and the Raiders, and I'd be very surprised if he's there next season. Well, welcome back with uh, Aaron Woods, our special guest today. So is Paul Kent with us, James Triceps Hooper and Maroon. And look, just before we move on, there's a big fundraiser happening on the 26th of June at the Coogee Legion Club. 26th of June, 8 to 11, the Broken Watch Band are playing and they will be raising funds for uh, a lady by the name of Kate who passed away um, after giving birth to just a little one. Um, just five weeks after giving birth, this poor lady passed away. So we're feeling for her and her family at the moment. And Broken Watch Band will be doing a fundraiser for the family on the 26th of June at the world-famous Coogee Legion Club. Now, of course, Broken Watch Band has got Ian Vernon, Skins Vernon on the drums, who played a little bit with the U2 back in the uh, mid-'70s. Time for this. From the makers of The Earth Is Flat and I'm Only Having One Beer comes I Call BS. All right, let's do I Call BS. Woodsy, do you know what this is all about? Yeah, I do, mate. Yes, I do. All right, so we find a topic that's grinding our gears. I was in a good mood yesterday. I get a call from Gordon Tallis, who's um, up up in Noosa at the surf club having a couple of beers with various uh, Noosa identities. And I said, mate, we've got the show tomorrow. What are you doing in Noosa? He said, well... um, uh, the this mob have given him the weekend off, and I don't know who I want to call BS on him for taking the weekend off, or our mob for giving him the weekend off. I mean, this bloke's supposed to be an origin legend. This is origin time. Here he is taking a weekend off mm. um, to do what? To go and gallivant around the Noosa getting things for free. Well, no, station management insisted that Gordon have a freshen up. Well, he he's should an have... origin legend. But, well, okay, but he's, he's not playing, part, is he? He's part of this side. He's not playing. No, though, but is they he? just felt as though he, he needed a freshen up leading into the origin series, and then he'll peak in the finals. I'm with you, Maroon. Yep, you're with me, Hoops. Oh, Kenny, <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. You're with me. Yep. Is this a stitch up or what? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul, that's. Oh, I tend to think that this, this, you know, Gordon should have been here today. Yeah. To, it's What's origin you, time. A few beers. Mm. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. No, he. Uh, he's a, he's he's our biggest biggest name on the show. Yeah. It's origin yeah. time. And he Queensland takes, are playing this week. Just disgraceful. Oh, I mean, mate, Townsville shocking. shocking. You know, and I mean, shocking. what? Who is running this joint that says to him, "Take the weekend off"? It's a, It's like if if it was Bathurst, the Bathurst car race, and the team boss goes over to driver Dave Reynolds and says, "Mate, have the week off." But it's in everybody's contracts, Anthony. That. At times, people will get a freshen up. Management will say, listen, we just think yeah, it'll be in your best interest. A freshen up just, for Just to take do, for a week off and then you'll be ready to peak. Are you getting into, a freshen up? Um, it's it's in the contract. Mate, if I were you, I'd say I, I, I wouldn't take it. I'd say, mate, this is ridiculous. Why am I taking a freshen up? It's not like you're digging holes. No. You know? No, I agree. Paul, are you good at getting a freshen up? No, no. He can have one if he likes. Mm. Well, it's in his, con- it's in his contract. Hey, I was talking to Paul there, yeah, mate. Right. In his Paul? Oh, no, I'm not going to have one, mate. Yeah, good on you, mate. Unless I feel like one, then I'll have it. <laughs> uh, uh, Woodsy, would you like to call BS on something? Uh, I'll probably call BS on the game on Friday night, the penalty try. Wingers don't make many tackles, and <laughs> to come in and make one tackle to save the game and get penalised <laughs> tries for it. Yeah. So I think that's a disgrace. Mm. Jeez, I mm. tell you what, he nearly got away with it too, didn't he? Very close. Mm. Only that they Lewis stayed down. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Which is probably another thing we call BS on. I'll, I'll call BS on. Uh, and, uh, I hate this creeping into the game because we don't want it to become like soccer. Dane Laurie on Friday yeah. night, I was on the hill at Leichhardt. And even on the hill, people weren't happy about it. You know, like So he goes down, then he puts on the Academy Award winning performance and pretends he's... He, he looked like he'd been snipered out of the crowd. He was yeah. <laughs> laying that motionless on the ground. Uh, and then, lo and behold, gets a penalty 
jumps up to his feet laughing at Matt Burton mm. and winding up. So we don't want to see that. No. I don't want to see that creeping into the game in every match. I don't think that's a good look for the game. Maybe next thing is, because, you know, like teams have got a wrestling coach. Maybe they should get them an acting coach if they're going to, um, mm. you know. They're pretty good at it already. Would you be able to help in that department? I don't know. I, I, I mean, probably I could help them with their voices, but not their... <laughs> And you know, well, they wouldn't need that if they're acting unconscious. Well, that's true. That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Paul, I wasn't going to say, but I, I saw you work, walk out of your house this morning and you could probably help them look unconscious the way you look <laughs> <laughs> when you went to the street today. That's right. Yeah. Well, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Had a caught up with a few friends yesterday. Did so. you really? <laughs> 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 I, did, I could, didn't know that. Yeah, no, it was good. Would you like to call BS on anything? Oh, look, I, I think we've hit this one before, but I, I, more details have come out this week. If everybody remembers, um, Palaszczuk at the beginning of the year was saying to the federal government they needed compensation uh, for the money they've lost in tourism when this is the same premier that, that un, well, not unfairly, but, but shut the state down, I thought was pretty harsh. Mm. And they lost, obviously, a lot of money in tourism because of the summer. No one could fly into Queensland. Uh, then she comes out and, you know, I think Gladys Berejiklian got it right when she just laughed at it when uh, the, the proposal was to put up for her to pay compensation. But I just wonder what sort of government she's running because we've now got this game in Townsville where they paid $8 million for it. The figures came out during the week that they probably looked to, to get about five, make $5 million. So there's a $3 million loss. Mm. Then, then they put the tickets on sale and all these poor people in towns were lined up, not being told that the people who had tickets bought in Melbourne, those tickets th immediately transferred yeah. to Townsville. So the tickets were sold out in 30 seconds. Yeah, right. That's, so that was ordinary. Uh, that and, was ordinary. And, yeah. I just, like, what sort of cowboy state is it? Yeah. It's Big, just, yeah. And she, she's the, she's the head on show. So she's got to, they're going to bank a $3 million loss to have it there and, and she gleefully cheered when, when Melbourne shut down with COVID and the, and the game was lost. And I just thought, oh, mate, this is a woman that's just got no connection with reality. She'll probably get re-elected off the back of it. Because <laughs> well, all that matters that's, up there is state of origin. But that's, but, <laughs> yeah. Herbs, her, that's why she did get re-elected in the last election, because of all this. So uh, she, she preyed on people's paranoia about COVID. She looked like she was being strong for the state. When in fact, she's just... She's costing them, costing them tens of millions of dollars. Now they're going to lose another three million on this game. Mm, I call BS. That's it for today um, with Woodsy, uh, Kenny, James Tricep Super. Woodsy, how are you going? You're enjoying it, mate? Yeah, I love it, mate. Uh, yeah. It's the best time being here. You're going good. You're going better than these two today. You know, I just love when they give it to you, mate. Yeah, I, oh, you <laughs> love that, do you? I love to be in here when Gordy's here, but oh. when he can come back at you. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. no, mate, no, no. The, he, mate, Gordy's like these two, mate. He can't go one out. He gotta, they've all got to be together. <laughs> but, mate, you're going great. Just remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Thanks, well, mate. I, I think Gordy will go right on his own against you. You, you reckon? Yeah. yeah. I think he might be right. Uh, <laughs> but he's not here today, so... Uh, yeah, just keep loading up. And he should be. The tongue of one shoe and the left eyebrow, Anthony. That's mm. all that would be left. I think you're probably right there. I have to agree with that. We're going to take a break, come back with uh, more... Uh, and, of course, uh, after three, Paul leaves us and we start Happy Hour here at Triple M. Triple M rocks the footy. Welcome back. And, uh, well, we've got, of course, a split round in the NRL. One game today, which we will have you for you broadcast live on Triple M. Dan will be in to call that one. And then, of course, we will do Origin live across the network on Wednesday evening. So the important thing is you can listen to it on Triple M or, of course, you can now stream every game of the NRL and AFL live on the listener app downloaded at L-I-S-T-N-R. That's our listener app. Dragons 52, Broncos 24, Tigers 26, Panthers 6, and Storm 20 beat the Titans 14. One uh, little thing we didn't get to talk about earlier was this little bit of rumbling around today um, of Mitchell Pearce possibly making his way back to Sydney to link up with um, the Sharkies. And I suppose he would have that association, that relationship with Craig Fitzgibbon, firstly, Paul, wouldn't he? Yeah, look, he, he worked, was at the Roosters when Fitzgibbon was there and they worked together. Uh, obviously, I think Mitch Pearce is obviously a very good player and he's something that I think Sharks could really do with, just a real solid performer like that. Uh, he's a... He's a an elite player. Uh, he signed earlier this year, if you remember, uh, just for that extension at, at Newcastle, which wasn't quite what he was after, but it put him 
uh, the, the, the Knights were sort of fairly clear about what they thought he was. Now, in hindsight, I think Mitch probably went a little bit too early with that contract because if you uh, shortly after that is when the, the little uh, halfback roundabout began and, mm. and all the halves were on, on the market and, and teams were looking and obviously the Broncos has jumped in for Adam Reynolds and, and whatnot. So uh, I think there's been a – we spoke about it a few weeks back on 360. There's been an approach to – to the Knights, would they be interested um, in letting him go? And I think there's a bit of discussion there, but again, it's just got to, you just got to make the deal work for you. So, um, but he would be, I think he'd be the sort of player that would really benefit at, at uh, Cronulla. But given that the, that there Woodsy's is a, a bloke we should be asking. Yeah. You, 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 you've got a good relationship with him too, Woodsy. Yeah. I, th- I think he'd really fit in well with that club. Uh, like you said, he's already got the, um, the mateship with Craig Fitzgibbons is going there, but they're losing so well, we're losing someone like Sean Johnson, who's our halfback at the moment. Um, Matty Moreland's still off contract. Uh, he's a five eight, and they've just signed Nico Hines, who's a five eight as well. So um, you got young Braden Trindle, who's sort of played a couple games for us, but you know he's still young and learning. And I think if you can sign someone like Mitchell Pearce, you know he's won Origins, he's won Grand Finals. To have that experience and help the young guy come through, I think it'll be it'll, mate, it'll be a massive boost for the club. Um, you know, I know he's. It doesn't live too far from the. He's got a place not too far from the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he'd fit in really well, and it's a good club. He's played with blokes like Wade Graham and that before. Um, I, I, and, and he knows the systems that Craig Fitzgibbons likes to employ. Uh, he's been worked under him at, at the Roosters before, and I think he'd slot in nice and easy there. But mm. you know, the thing is, given all this, given all this, and given that we know that there's a halfback shortage in the NRL of quality halfbacks, why on earth would Newcastle say off you go? We just signed. They've just re-signed him. Yeah, no, they're Clifford too to come. Yeah, I, I realise. Yeah. yeah, well, he's there. Jay Clifford's gone there now, so he'll be available today, isn't for he? selection. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He's playing today. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Mitchell agreed to a one-year extension uh, at the beginning of this year. In light of everything that we now know, he probably jumped the gun a little bit early. Like he, j- I think he just wanted to recommit to the club to have mm. his future settled, and then he he's basically going to uh, play on a year-by-year basis. Mm. Uh, but if Cronulla come in and make an offer for a couple of years, well, is it worth hanging on to a player if the player isn't committed to your club? Yeah. That's mm. the question that mm. Newcastle have got to ask themselves. Mm. And I, I reckon that they would have had those conversations well, internally. The, the Knights already showed, too, he wasn't a high priority. That's right. Because of the, the fact that they they extended him for just one year when he was seeking longer. Yeah. Uh, he took something of a pay cut mm-hmm. in that year. So clearly... They, they've tried to say to Mitchell, well, mate, we don't know if you're quite what you were, so we'll, we'll pay what we think is fair. And if Cronulla are prepared to go above that and, and they're going to value him and make him a priority, that's where the, the conversation's got to be had. Do, do you think, because remember at the start, he had a little bit of dramas up there. Do you think that they sort of tried to use that against him a little bit to try to get him a bit cheaper and he wanted to repay the faith by saying, yeah, look, I'll, you know, I'll commit as well. No doubt. You raise a good point, Woodsy. Uh, I reckon, you know, Junior, it was obviously a tough summer for him. Yeah. And I reckon uh, the type of bloke that he is, he would have felt as though he did owe the club um, a debt of gratitude. But look, as we know in rugby league, it's become a business these days and players can switch clubs on a on a whim. Mm. And I, I certainly think that there I did is... I five games, remember, we were in. <laughs> That's right, mate. Yeah. Was it five or four? Oh. It was actually 12. I tell you, you didn't even, <laughs> mate, you didn't even get your locker yet. You oh, didn't no, even was, have a locker yet. I was still yet. in the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, when you went to the doggies. I'm supposed to be there for four years. I was there for 12 weeks. I heard that they went to uh, Raylene Castle and said, we're going to have to let Aaron Woods go. And she said, who? She got punted. Oh. Oh. Well, she was actually at a different sport. She got punted before me. Oh, did she? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, well, look... Uh, Take that back, Anthony. Unfortunately, Paul... What about you? Don't you just like... Oh, uh, come on. Mm. Well, you I just want to slipper everyone. No, I just can't wait for Gordy he, to be back. He was, get he was getting ready to blindside me. Mm. He was getting ready oh, to suck you a punch. Get in first. First. I did. Yeah, yeah. I like did. Kenny said, throw as many punches as you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here today. But now we are going to jazz things up a bit with Benji Marshall. It's happy hour. Welcome back to hour three of the Sinbin. We're doing it thanks to Sea-Doo. Uh, no passport, no worries. This is good for you because you love the Sea-Doo thing. Hoops, and you can't get a passport for the next few years. So this is great for you. We could get a sea uh, Spud Carroll would teach us how to um, uh, operate it. Yeah. And like not Spud, that hard, Anthony. Yeah. Have you ever ridden a jet ski? A lot uh, of fun. Right. I mean, I've been, in, I've been on one. You've been but on the I back of one, on have you, while somebody one. else was yeah, riding yeah. one. Yeah, held onto their hips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you good. rode side saddle. Uh, yeah. But it was uh, quite an adventure. But it, it was a sea It was a good one. It was the... 
It was the main thing. As long it, as we don't have to launch them down at Little Kongwong, your favourite beach. Oh, no, we'll be down I'm there. We'll be down there. Doing a few demos down there. Drone flying above. Aren't you currently serving a bit of a band from down <laughs> there? <laughs> yeah, but I put my disguise on, mate. Yeah, <laughs> Fake beard, fake glasses. Uh, Aaron Woods has been with us today. And so, too, now we're joined by the great Benji oh. Marshall. Hello, Ben. Hi, mate. You know what the good news about this hour is? What? It's happy hour. It's happy so hour. So I just said to Woodsy, he can share up a bit. Kenny's gone. <laughs> start being himself. The sad crowd's gone, eh? <laughs> yeah. um, mate, the, the first point of uh, duty for you, what mm. we need you to do here, Benji, is offer Woodsy some, uh, an appraisal of his two hours on the show. Well, phenomenal, mate, from what I heard, and I haven't heard any of it. So. <laughs> That's good. Appreciate it, mate. <laughs> no, he's all good, mate. He's yeah. a good bloke, Woodsy. You know, mm. people get confused about him. He looks like he's not, but he, he's all right. He's a good bloke. Yeah, he's we all right. We can trust him. Well, back in the days when Woodsy was like 14, 15 and just coming through the grades, mm. he was the only kid who ever trained with the first grade squad. Right. And without giving him too much raps, like he had it from 14. Yeah. Seriously, the foot, the footy stuff. And he trained with us from such a young age. And I knew he was going to be a great footy player, and I taught him everything he knew. So if, if <laughs> let, let, let's say, Benji, if we gave him a job here on a more permanent arrangement, if you – this is like the mafia. Mm-hmm. If you vouch for him yeah. and he turns out to be a – Oh, no, I was talking about footy, not radio. Oh, you wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would never, I'd never <laughs> let him down, but. Right. All right. Yeah. No, he okay. was good. He was good. Anyone trying to fight me, he was in there. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I was the only one who talked to him. All the mm. other guys used mm. to make them earn his respect, but I just talked to him because he was yeah, good. No, Benji's one of the good ones. Mm. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a couple of blokes that would just walk past. No, name your name's Farrah. He still doesn't talk to me. <laughs> oh, Benji, you are on fire. Uh, Origin coming up this week. Oh, good. Yeah, you looking forward to it? I am, mate. I am. I'm, it's probably one of the days of the calendar for me where I don't have to worry about um, having and trying to play or trying to make the team. I can sit back and actually be a fan. And mm. uh, well, this year is no different for me. Um, you know, I, I actually played Queensland Schoolboys, but uh, my allegiance changed a little bit because I had a lot of mates playing for New South Wales. But I just sit on the fence now. Yeah. Who do you like, Benji, from the two sides that have been selected? Well, <laughs> From the sides that are selected, honestly, New South Wales, I, th- I think, have got the stronger squad and the stronger side. But Queensland, like, you look at Game 3 last year. They got pumped Game 2 and you think, oh, well, it's over here. And then Game 3 in Queensland, they're just a different team. They're a different side. So um, the only thing that worries me about Queensland is a couple of their stars haven't played a lot of footy. Uh, Harry Grant's been out for a while. Munster's been out for a while. I actually wouldn't be surprised if, if I was coaching them, I'd bring Harry off the bench. Let the first 20, the sting of the first 20 get out of the game. Um, because New South Wales, if he starts, will just run all your traffic at him. He hasn't played for a while. Make mm. him make a few tackles. Try and take his energy out for attack. We all know what he can do with the ball. And um, fatigue and origin apparently is another level. You'd probably know Woodsy, but for for him, if he's making a lot of tackles and hasn't played for a while, and then tries to bring energy with the the running game, that energy might not be there. So I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at the first twenty he doesn't play. Ben, do you know last year when when Harry did come to you guys, did you see straight away that mate we've got a player on our hands here or? To, yeah, to be fair, Woody, I um I wasn't sure because I hadn't seen him play. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't seen him play either. I saw one training session, I reckon, when he was there, and and it convinced me already without having to know that he, he yep. was he was special. Um, I was so impressed, not just the way he trained and the way he played, but he's just such a good young kid. You know, he's like really down to earth, wanted to learn, um, and just like he'd turn up to meetings with a notepad and write down everything the coach would say and take it all in. And then after the meeting, you'd see him sit in the sheds and he's looking at all the writing. Obviously, being new is different, but I asked him, I said, what, what are you doing there? And he said, to be honest with you, like in Melbourne, this is normal. Cameron right. used to do it. Cooper used to do it. This is just what they did. You know, they write everything down and they remember it. And then it's like a full studying session. And I thought, you know what? I might start writing some stuff down. <laughs> did you start? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I wasn't going to change it. But like for a kid, you know, you just don't see that stuff. And that just summed up where I thought he was going to be heading. And um, yeah, full credit to Harry. He's just done a really good job, hasn't he? We heard about his name before he debuted for many years. The Bulldogs made a massive play to try and get him there. Yeah, right. And I remember um, speaking to a lot of people in the game about him, and he used to play uh, up in the Queensland Cup, and Cooper Johns was in the same side. So I rang Matty Johns and asked him, and he said, mate, this kid will be the Queensland hooker for the next 10 years. Once he plays wow. NRL, he's going to be a, a mm. super player. Mm. Well, you got to look at what he did in, the, in game three last year. Seriously, like... Mm. Off the charts. Yeah. Yep. That just For, doesn't on, happen. On debut. On debut. Yeah. Uh, Benj, can I ask Cameron Munster, he got the Wally Lewis medal in the series last year. What do you love when you watch Cameron Munster play about the way he goes about things? Oh, he just doesn't have a care in the world. You know, a lot of kids come into first grade and they don't play with any pressure. They don't play with any fear. And Munster seems to play that way every game. Like he's played over a hundred first grade games now, you know, and 
he just keeps playing that way. And you know when Cameron Munster's on because he's running the footy and can't, oh, people are trying to take him down. He's like getting the legs, like people are coming in to tackle the legs. And you just come in. If you come in and like he backs away and does this thing, I don't know, he gives this little smug look on his face where he's like, he can't, like it takes three or four to get him down. Then he hits he's not massive, eh, Woodsy, no, but he's so just so frustrating, strong. frustrating, mate. You, you think you've got a hold of him and then he just shimmy, shimmy and gets away from you. It's, it, it, you, you talk about all week what he's going to do, but it's that hard to stop it at the same time, isn't oh, it? Crazy. I heard a yarn, and this uh, is a bit of an insight into the simplicity and genius of Wayne Bennett, where he said to Cameron, leading into last year's series, kick to the corners, make your tackles, and make sure you run the ball, run the football. That's your main thing. And you go back to game three. The yeah, most carries and it in the was, game. It was him crazy, running, the, yeah. running the ball and coming up with chips and little grubbers down the sideline and scoring tries. And he's a genius. He's great mm. to watch. Yeah, and but from the New South Wales side, Benj, oh, I think a lot of people are looking forward to seeing how Luai and Cleary go together at that level. Particularly Luai, what do you think, what would you be saying to him going into a big game like that? Oh, well, you look at like these games, there's always storylines into games and there's always the reasons why people watch it. That's one of the reasons. They want to see how these two are going to go together. Mm. How's Jerome going to go? That's one of the biggest questions. But if you look at the way he's played, I reckon the last six or seven weeks at Penrith, he's just done, he hasn't, done anything too fancy he's done his job he's fed his outside man he's made his tackles had a few runs and and origins um you know is, is, is where you played the tough footy you're coming coming off your line quite a lot so you got to do a little one percentage you have to get your kick chase right and in the halves he's probably not going to doing a lot mm. be doing a lot of the kicking he'll be doing a lot of the chasing and he's going to get some traffic running at him so i think it, it's been a good setup the last few games they've had for him leading into origin the way he's played because you know he's going to step up and he's a confident young kid he was your roomie in the All Stars, wasn't he? In the yeah. Mary All Stars? No, he was. He was. He was. He was. I can tell why he's so confident because, like, <laughs> rooming with him is just like fun. Yeah. You know, and he he's not afraid to be himself, and that's what I love about the way I, Ivan Cleary coaches too. Like, he yeah. he encourages people to be themselves and um, express the way you are on the field. Mm. And like with guys like Jerome, and you can see how Kiko and guys like at Penrith, the way they play, they mm. express themselves. Mm. And I room with them and. He expresses himself. Let me tell you, he is, he is <laughs> but in a good way. He's such a good young kid, and um, I've got a lot of time for him, yeah. Is he like Maroon? Does he walk around his undies and do push-ups? Well, he's, sort of? he is like Maroon a bit, struts around. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah but, well, I do walk around in my undies, but I don't do push-ups. That's got <laughs> taken it. Well, we can tell. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hey, what about, Benj, the, the, the news we spoke about earlier, that Timmy Sheens is mm. going back to have an involvement with the Tigers. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a great, a great um, appointment. Like all the things I don't know, Tim's good at is um, he he pushes the basics. So drawing passes, two on ones, three on twos, the things that are not often coached a lot these days. And I think sometimes you can get a, a misconception with when you start coaching first grade. You think that all the kids already know how to do that once you get to first grade, but you'd be quite surprised. A lot of you know twenty four, twenty five year olds don't often do the basics that well. And what I can see his role doing there, especially for they got a massive area of young kids to choose from, right? Mm. So if he can get around these young kids and develop them and, and do what he did for guys like myself, Liam Fulton, Woodsy to a certain extent, you know, and show them the basics to get ready to play first grade, I think it's a great, a great appointment for him. And not only that, like he won the, only, the club's only ever yeah. premiership there and mm. coached that. So there's already a, a bit of a connection there. And um, you know, I think he'll do a great job there. Yeah, it's a fantastic appointment. I wish he'd been there last year because uh, it would have meant that Benji wouldn't have been let go the way that he was. Um, and I mean that in all seriousness. And uh, look, I've got no doubt whatsoever. You go back to the success of 2005. You go back to when the Tigers were genuine uh, premiership credentialed side. Uh, they finished 80 minutes short that year against the Dragons when Jamie Sow had kicked the field goal. They were a damn good side. And the reason for that and all the systems and structures and the streamlining of everything was all based on the Tim Sheen's blueprint. So it's a great appointment. Okay, boys, Woodsy, Benji, Triceps, Hooper, and Maroon. We've got a very big special guest. We're going to take a break because we've got him on hold there on the phone. Paul Green from Queensland Origin Camp is going to join us next as Triple M rocks the footy. Two at Dragons, 52, beat the Broncos, 24. Tigers, 26, beat the Panthers, 6. Storm, 20, beat the Titans, 14. And today, Parramatta, Newcastle, the boys will preview that game before we all move on. Those scores are thanks to Tyre Power. Get the power of Australia's biggest independent stock take sale. It's on now 
at tyre power. Well, of course, this man had a uh, wonderful career as an NRL player, playing 160-plus games before he moved on to be an NRL coach where he won a premiership with the North Queensland Cowboys. He's an old mate of the show, and he joins us now. Paul Green, welcome to the Sunday Sinbin. Thanks, boys. How are you going? Fantastic, mate. Talk us through it. What's going on in camp right now? Well, actually, as we speak, uh, staff and I are just going for a nice little walk along the beach at, at down the Gold Coast. Not on the beach, on the path, I should say. Beautiful. Good exercise. How do you rate the preparation to date, Greeny? Are you happy with everything? How are the injured blokes coming along? Yeah, no, I've been pretty happy with how it's all gone. Um, a couple of little hiccups here and there, um, but nothing too major. So, it's, yeah, it's all been pretty, pretty good so far. What's the latest with Dane Gagai and he's got tonsillitis, is that right? Yeah, he got tonsillitis, so he came down with that a couple of days ago, so uh, we felt it was best um, you know, to give him, a, give him a rest, get some antibiotics into him and he should be right. Greeny, how have you found the preparation different to lead into this Origin Series compared to coaching the NRL sides? Oh, it's, um, you know, it's a little bit more um, shorter term thinking, if that makes sense. Like You're not trying to develop a team game or, or individual players over have a sort of 26 rounds. You just got to try and get it right for at least two out of the three games. Um, you know, so you got um, players from all different clubs, obviously. So you know, early in the in the camp, it's about getting everyone together and getting them on the same page with what's going to be important for our game, and and then uh, yeah, executing that. It's a wonderful. Uh, it's a, a great stage for you here, Greeny, because you've had a, a great career yourself as a player you've won a premiership as a coach now if you can tick off an origin series win as a head coach mate you've just about done it all yeah it'd be nice um and uh you know obviously getting the uh, the game the first game back in in towns would be also another nice little bonus for us as well so yeah i mean um i was lucky enough to play some origin games so to be able to uh you know coach in that area too i'm, I'm you know really chuffed about it Greeny, there was a little bit of surprise when you opted to release Reid Marnie back for club duties. Does that mean that in all likelihood Harry Grant will have to play 80 minutes? Or, Well, we'll see how um, the game pans out for Harry. Um, but given Harry hadn't played and um, he's coming in with an injury, uh, you know, a hamstring issue, um, we hadn't seen him. You know, ball reports he was, he was going well. Um, so we just brought Reid in as a bit of insurance there just to make sure Harry did come up how he expected, um, and he has. So that was that was the reason why Reed and, and the other reason was, you know, Reed's not too far away either. So, you know, we'd give him a bit of a taste of what camp's like, and, you know, if he happens to get a run through the series, it's, you know, it's not all new to him. He knows what to expect. Greeny, what about blokes like, you got Big Tino there, you got David Fafita there, so everybody knows what they are capable of. But, you know, we we don't want to forget how young they still are as players, do you have to take that on board? How do you treat blokes like that in camp? Um, well, you don't treat them any differently. Um, they're great players in their own right. Um, they are young, so you just got to keep that in mind. And you know, whilst they've they've played Origin, it, it's still you know, relatively new for them. But again, it's just about creating a, a good, comfortable environment for them, where where everyone can, as I said, feel comfortable and be themselves, and bring out hopefully bring out the best. What about the uh, controlling your big boys before the one on Wednesday night? Uh, you know, there was a bit of a battle between Tino and Payne House last year. They, they'll be quite excited to uh, lock horns again this, this Wednesday. Yeah, look, that's part of origin, isn't it? You know, I think um, everyone likes and looks forward to those those one-on-one battles, particularly between the big men. So, you know, if that happens, it happens. Greedy, have you sought out some clarity or clarification uh, from the NRL or the match officials in relation to there's obviously been a lot of headlines about the current crackdown. Have you spoken to anybody at head office or the referees about how it will unfold Wednesday? No, I haven't. I haven't yet. Um, and I, there's nothing, you know, planned at this stage. Uh, but I've seen there's been plenty of commentary around the fact that it'll be ref the same way. Um, but I just, I think, you know, it, you'd hate to see in origin a team with 11 or for a period of time, or, you know, you, you got the best players playing and, you know, a game could pretty quickly go away from another team if, they've, if they're down to 11. So you'd hate to see that decide a, a game or, or a series. Um, but, yeah, you know, the, the players have been playing under those conditions now for a few weeks. So, you know, I think they're better. Um, you know, they're used to it if that's the best way to put it now. Um, I think there's been less sim bins the last couple of weeks. So, you 
I think it's sort of uh, stabilising a little bit, if that's the best way to put it. Yeah, it does seem as though it's evening out. But will you speak to the group in the lead up, and will you will you mention that or? Well, I mean, of course, you don't want to cost your team. Um, but one of the points that I've always said is that we don't coach them to hit them in the head. So why should we start coaching them to not hit them in the head? I think, um, you know, the game moves pretty quickly and at different times, you know, incidental contact may happen um, given the nature of how the game's going and particularly origins are a bit quicker. Um, so it's not, you know, as I said, I don't, I don't know whether I can change too many people's techniques in you know, a couple of sessions. So. As I said, it's just more an awareness thing and, you know, you don't want to cost your team. What about uh, New South Wales, Greeny? Is there any uh, things you've highlighted where they'd be beatable? No. They're a very strong team. Unbeatable, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, well, mate, but what about, uh, so I, I imagine, Greeny, that toward the end there, you know, club coaching would have got pretty stressful for you. So you move away from that NRL arena. Now you do the origin thing. Is there still the, the desire there to go back into club land? Oh, look, I'd say so. Um, you know, that, that, that is a, the kind of the ultimate challenge, I suppose, you know, winning premierships and coaching at club level. But for now, I'm, I'm really happy coaching origin. You know, I've really enjoyed the camp. I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing. So for now, that, that's just what I'm focused on is to make sure I do a good job there. Greeny, I've got to hit you with a hard one. We know Alan Lang is always a huge part of Queensland State of Origin camp. Has he had a birthday in camp this time around? <laughs> um, he hasn't, but a couple of other blokes have. <laughs> <laughs> Who has? <laughs> they definitely regretted having their birthdays. <laughs> Who has had a birthday? <laughs> it doesn't matter if it was their birthday or not. Once Alf picks, it picks on them, that's it for them. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, Greeny, before we let you go, old oh, mate, we just hope and pray that poor old Dane Gagai with that tonsillitis is okay and everything's right to go on Wednesday night and we'll call the game on Triple M. He should be, but what's an origin series without a bit of drama along the uh, way? Exactly. <laughs> Good on you, Greeny. Thanks, boys. Good on you, mate. There he is, Paul Green, joining us, the uh, Queensland origin coach, joining us. And as I say, we've... Uh, We've got that game for you live on the Triple M Network. We're back. Four o'clock today. We've got the Knights taking on Parramatta. It's a big game for Parramatta. Had a, a bad fortnight, but we'll talk to the boys about that shortly. Uh, Woodsy, Benji and Hoops, and it's time for this. What does the fox say? What does the fox say? Two scoops, Hoops. James Triceps Hooper, the Triceratops, what have you got for us? The Redfern Rocket, the Waterloo White Ant, you absolutely love it. Uh, look, this is a, a bit of a negative one, and I hate kicking off on this note, but at the moment, uh, the Canberra Times have just broken a story. Uh, Curtis Scott, I think, has been involved in a, a bit of a fracas at one of the nightclubs down there. So right. the Raiders are obviously having a look uh, into that. Hopefully it's nothing too serious, and uh, we can get to six again, play on. Mm -hmm. Sean Johnson was along with Aaron Woods uh, and Josh Dugan informed that he would no longer be at Cronulla next year, this week. I reckon the Bulldogs are going to make a massive play for him. I think that they see he and Matt Burton as a quality pairing. Uh, and What's happened to Flanagan? Yeah, I think he's struggling. I think he's I think he's going to find it hard to get back in the side. Wow. wow. Do you like that pairing, Johnson and Burton, if it was to land oh, that way? I, well, without Sean being there, I would have probably like to have a look at Flanagan and mm. Burden first, you know, because just for Flano's sake, like he really hasn't had a lot of experience, like halves around him. Like, oh, Jake Averill is a good player, don't get me wrong, but he hasn't had people who play in the halves to be able to take a bit of pressure off him. So it's all sort of been solely on him, which is why I feel a bit sorry for him. But, you know, Sean's, Sean's a good player, so it's, it's hard to, to see where that's going to pan out. But, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Flanagan get a shot with Burden first. And look what Burden's done this year. Phenomenal, oh. you know, and imagine that in the Senate's too. Yeah, I mean, he played five eight Friday night, but I even think. on even Friday night, he was their most dangerous player. Yeah, Penrith's most dangerous player. So imagine having the, him next to Flano just to be able to take a bit of that pressure off. Yeah, that's a that. Uh, just on what Benji was saying there, hoops. That's a real. I really feel for Flanagan, the the poor kid. He, he he's had to move clubs already, and he's a great little player. Look, it's a, he has been dealt some hard cards. I mean, he's had some great opportunities presented to him as well, signed by the Sydney Roosters. That obviously uh, didn't work out there. And so as a result, the Bulldogs stepped in and again signed him to a three-year deal. Uh, look, if there's anybody who can get Kyle Flanagan going, it'll be Trent Barrett. Like, he was a gun half himself, and he definitely knows uh, what it takes to play well in that position. So, yeah, look, fingers crossed he, he, he might be able to 
get back on the field in terms of the NRL in the next few weeks and, and show his best footy. There was some talk of perhaps Sean Johnson to Souths. What do you think of that as a, as a supporter of the club? Well, I think that there's got to have to be some sort of, um, um, st- I don't want to say stopgap, but these t- younger halves, I don't think they're going to be completely ready, Benj, for next year. So maybe Sean Johnson comes in, has a year at Souths. These guys develop a little bit more. What's wrong with the big fella going around one more year? I was just about to yeah, say, there well, was I, talk. No, no, he's obviously ridden me off. No, I That's thought fine. you weren't going around one more year. I, <laughs> no, I, I, mate, we love you having no, you. You don't have to pull the handbrake. It's fine. No, no, think, no. Just say what you think. That's okay. <laughs> mate, I think Look that you, you. No, no. I, reverse. You know that I think that it's a disgraceful way, the way you don't respond to phone messages or text messages. Well, if you keep but, bringing it up, I'll keep remembering. Well, mate, I tell you what, I'm never going to ring you again, but that's another well, you thing. you haven't rung me once because you don't have my number. No, I haven't got your number. I sent it to everyone, my new number to everyone in this room except you. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. You know why? Because I won't be ringing you. Okay. Good. I don't want you to call me. You know how happy that makes yeah. me. Yeah. I'm asking you: Are you playing next year, mate? Don't take away from the segment. What did the fox say? What else you got, mate? Hey, see, see, well, see. On that, Benji, uh, there was a lot of talk, and I'll ask you now. Earlier in the year, um, obviously, you've had a great transition um, to the bunnies, and there was talk that if Adam Reynolds, as has panned out, signed somewhere else, that perhaps you would go around again. Have you made a call on that yet? Or oh, I haven't made a call, but I haven't made a call for the last five years until mm. the end of the season. You know, yeah. it's too hard. The season's too long and hard to know how you're feeling at the end of the year. You know, yeah. And I've just taken it season by season, and I feel like that's helped me. Um, more than likely, I probably won't be playing. Um, but you just you just never know. But at the moment, I'm not even thinking about playing. And Sal Seven spoken to me about playing again, yeah, so well, that's not even... For those young kids to have you around, mate, that would be a massive boost for that club. The, the knowledge you have in the game. I remember when I was a kid coming through and having a bloke like you beside me at training, seeing the yeah, things... Because right. you, you don't just do those things on a weekend, but you do it at training <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. So <laughs> It's it's funny because all those young kids, like, honestly, I'm old enough to be some of their fathers. <laughs> I was born, I'm 18 years older than some yeah. of them, you know, which is quite a big difference. And the one thing they always, well, they all say to me is, how come you're so immature? Like, like seriously, you're always in the cop, but you act the younger. still a punish. Yeah. I said, but yeah, yeah. you know what? Yeah. I'll learn it from Woodsy. Huh? But see, <laughs> Woodsy, you said, what, what, what about uh, Benji running around for another year? And then he responds by saying, he does, has, doesn't think he will. He hasn't made his mind up. He's in two minds about it. Well, South or any club can't sit around waiting for this bloke to decide what no, he mate, wants to do next year. The question, world doesn't mate. revolve around no Benji Marshall. Yeah, you're right. It revolves the, around you. That's right. Yeah. That's great. Well, my world does. Yeah. My world does. Of and oh. Alice, Alice does too. Look at your stupid questions. And what about you, Woodsy? You, oh, here we uh, go. Don't mate, point. It's really uh, the point, mate. Uh, you got him on the back foot. You, 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 you'll be perfect for him. Because <laughs> yeah. you just jump on board with anyone who's off me. You just jump There's nothing wrong with that. I've got my eye on you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. I, hey, can I on. please interject here yeah, and go. ask Benji a serious football question? Mm. Have you seen much of young Lachlan Ilias and Blake Taff? A little bit. I, I haven't seen a lot of their games. I mean, I... I know Lachlan Elias is a half, um, and I saw some of his highlights the other day. Kid can play. Um, and Blake Taff, in my opinion, is probably more of a 5'8 slash fullback sort of role. Um, but it depends. They might transition Cody to halfback and, and play one of those guys at 5'8. Because, well, Cody does a lot of our calling at the moment, a lot of the talking in terms of the way we play. So that, that might not change next year. But the thing with the kids is you don't know how they're going to go until they get an opportunity. Like, look at the, some of the kids that have stepped up this year. Mm. Like Sam Walker. Everyone's like, well, was he ready? Well, has he not been? Has yeah. he not proved that he's ready? Like young Reese Walsh, is he ready? Well, he gets an opportunity at the Warriors, and they've been two of their best players. It's you just got to give him an opportunity and see what happens. All right. Anything more from what does the Fox say? Well, I mean, there's been a lot of blow ups about the crackdown, and I think everyone's in agreement that it, it, Zach Valandis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sir, take that back. Lucky, lucky uh, Kenny's gone. That was, a, that, was, that was a joke, <laughs> guys. Just so you know, that was just a joke. Uh, glad, glad we clarified that. Uh, uh, yeah, there's obviously been a lot of backlash and blow up about the crackdown. I think everybody agrees that it, it, they did push it too far to the absolute nth degree. I thought Joey Johns wrote a brilliant column during the week where he said, you know, if you're a big wave surfer, you're going to come off the board sometimes yep. uh, when it's a bit hectic. If you're a jockey, you're going to have falls. If you're a rugby league player, you're going to go out there. And at times, it won't be deliberate, but there will be innocuous, um, unintentional contact where you'll get clipped in the head somewhere. So, Anthony, you, you know all about that. Yep. Um, you've been getting clipped in a loaf of bread since oh. day dot. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. I've been, look, I've absolutely had the, you know what, kicked out of me when I was 14 um, 
in the... Is this uh, the Randy Wicks again? No, this is the boxing ring at South Police Boys Club. Oh. Big Greek kid named Dennis punched me in the head and broke my glasses. <laughs> so I, 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 for real? I think I might have a, like some sort of a concussion Can thing. Can you send me his number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have mine. I think he's... <laughs> 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 so, mate, I don't want your number, no, right? right? Can, can, hey, can I, I just check, why were you wearing glasses in the boxing ring? Well, I couldn't see him without the glasses on. <laughs> and, and Benji, just to put this matter to bed, I don't have your number, but I have your mother's. Cha-ching! Oh, oh, that's so, oh. Should I tell him about my mum? No, I won't say yeah. that. It's a low blow, that. Ooh, really? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> no, nah, she loves it. It's all good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, you're too much, Anthony. Benji. <laughs> the point yeah. I was going to make is uh, if you look at Ryan Pappenhausen at the moment, like we haven't seen him since yeah. uh, T- Terrell Fumiano put that stiff arm on him at Magic Round and knocked him cold. And I think that's an example. Like we want to see players of the caliber. He's one of the superstars of the game. We haven't mm. seen him for a month, and he's still going to be out for another couple of weeks. This is the of... crazy thing about rugby league players is we're not that open to change. Yeah. Until change mm. happens, and then we adapt to it, and then we're like, oh, okay, that well, that was the right thing. But that's... But I've been playing for 19 years. Like, not a lot has changed about the contact of the game, mm. right? And to get used to that, it's hard. At the start, I was fully against it, fully against it. And as it's gone on and gotten, like, clearer and clearer for me now, all they're trying to do is protect us and the, and the kids coming through and the mums to be able to say, oh, I want my kid to be able to play rugby league. And on that note, that that's a good thing. Mm. Yeah, And they policed it hard, sure, and it seems like it's backing, backing off a little bit. But in the long run, I'm glad someone's looking out for the player. Mm. That's the positive part. Okay. Is there anything else in what does the Fox say? Well said, Benji. Mm. I've been in radio since about 1987. That is Fettingham, the worst segment Mate, I've ever been me. anywhere. Don't turn on There's me. There's only one because, worse. Don't turn on me because you just had seven, several different shades of colours punched <laughs> out of you. Okay? Well, I've got to tell you that our friend Alistair that runs a Settlers Hotel in Port Macquarie. The one that you, promised, the one yeah. that you promised to dress up in a Roosters cheerleader. No, that's another thing altogether. Bet, he yes. told me he saw you playing footy at boarding school. Yep. And you were the first. You, your grandmother nearly literally died of embarrassment when she came to see you play. Mate, don't bring, Thel- what position? Don't bring Thelma into it, okay? What, what position? I used, I used yeah. to play rugby union, Anthony. Oh, what Dave position? Holder, what position do you reckon he played? I played open oh, side break. I reckon he wouldn't know. have got a, if, he's, if he's, he's not a small dude. I reckon he wouldn't have got it. a start. I reckon he would have got... Maybe when Unlike you, I didn't sit on the bench the whole game with the ice cream container <laughs> upside down strapped around my head, okay? Uh, but look at uh, you now, but Yeah. <laughs> Best time we're out here on radio. <laughs> uh, it's happy hour. You can't have a laugh, Anthony. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, all right, we'll take a break. And come back. Triple M's NRL Primetime. Welcome back to it. And, of course, the Sunday Sinbin is brought to you by a CD. Do get on board a Sea-Doo and discover why it's Australia's number one. Looking for an escape or adventure? This is what you got to do. No passport, no worries. It's all about the Sea-Doo. And, of course, wherever you are on Wednesday night, if you want to listen to Origin, maybe you're working, you're driving, you've got to listen to it rather than watch it. I hope you listen to it here on Triple M. And you can do that via our listener app if you want. You can now stream every NRL and AFL game on Listener. Download it now, L I S T N R. Listener with uh, Woodsy and Benji and so to Hoops and Maroon. It's been a uh, a very full-on show today. Hoops, before we go, we've got a big game about to kick off at 4 o'clock today. Yeah, 20 years since the 2001 Grand Final. It's Old Boys Day for the Newcastle Knights. And uh, traditionally, they always put in a stoic performance uh, to honour all the players who've worn the jumper of the Newcastle Knights over the years. Uh, today, though, Benji, oh, gee, they're missing a lot of firepower, aren't they? Well, they are, and they've been missing a lot of their halves for most of the season. And, you know, they did put in a great performance last week off the back of um, young Phoenix Crossland. I thought his kicking game got them home, just kept applying pressure down their half. But this week, this task, although you're right, they do play good on Old Boys Weekend every time it's around. But Parramatta, I reckon, bouncing back with a point to prove. Dylan Brown's back. they got a few... Um, Campbell Gillard's probably going to be a bit dirty. He didn't get selected for Origin. So guys that with a point to prove, young Hayes Dunster comes in for Ferguson. So to me, the bounce back factor and the, with the, the will to win with Parra today and their class, I think they just get home. What have you made of Parramatta's pack so far this season, Woodsy? I think they've been really good. Um, I think they try to bully you nice and early in the game. But I think if you can withstand them for that first 10 to 20 minute period and, and know that you can go set for set with them, I think that's when you, you get a bit of belief that you can run through them. 
But the only thing is, you know, they're missing their two main men up front, Newcastle. Toffiti's in origin, and, and clemmer has been suspended. So, and, and like and like Ben just said, yeah, Tyson Frizzell's out as well with the, with the ankle. So, uh, and and you know what Ben just said, Campbell Gillard's going to come back, be filthy. That he didn't get picked in origin. Reid Money's going to have the confidence of knowing that he was that close to playing origin as well. I just think they're forward. They're going to get him to too much momentum, and I think Reid Marnie and Moses will have a field day today. Mm. Who you yeah, hard, I reckon Sorry. it's been a hard week for Reid Marnie in that when he first got picked in that squad, we all thought he was in the team, and that was the general oh. word that went around was he would start and Harry Grant would play mm. off yeah. the bench. But I think Harry surprised the Maroons staff with how how fit he was and how he wasn't. There were no issues or uh, repercussions in relation to that hamstring, and so as a result. Reed has to now come back. It, it'd be such a high to to make the Origin squad. Well, absolutely, and not just that. Like he'll be trying to show what they've let go. You know, this is hey Queens and selectors. Here I am. This is what you've let come back to clubland and and be looking to prove a point. And you know, rugby league players are dangerous when they're they got reasons to play and they got fired or well, they're fired up for for something. And I think just today Parramatta, you know, they've copped a lot of flack the last couple of weeks. But if you think about their season, they're nine and three. Like there's a lot of teams who mm. kill to be nine and three. They've won right. nine games. They've lost three games, right? And they've lost two of those three in the last couple of weeks. Uh, they're not going that bad, you know. They, I think, they are entitled to be favourites up there to, mm. to win the competition with how they, how they, well, where they're placed now at this part of the season. But there, there's a lot on the line here, boys. Though for for the Knights, they've had a disappointing year. Granted, there has been some injuries, but they're sitting down there on twelfth position on ten points. It's old boys' day. It's in Newcastle. If ever they were going to aim up, it's got to be today. Yeah, definitely. It's one of the big games of the year, especially at Newcastle. When the old boys are there, you know, you get them around. It just brings so much energy to the side. I know we played up there a couple of times with the Tigers. Normally they do it probably the last couple of rounds of the season. And, yeah. you know, you're dead set in for a fight. Even when they were, you know, they had those three or four years where they got the spoon. They were still up for the challenge each week, uh, each old boys game. And, uh, it'll be a massive opening, I reckon. I reckon the first 20 to 30 minutes will be will be massive. But I think if Parramatta can get through that early, early, you know, the early tussle of the game, I think it'll go a long way to help them win. All right. Let's leave that there because there's a more important game on Wednesday night. Boys, <laughs> who wins this one and why, Woodsy? Uh, like I said before, mate, I think New South Wales by seven. Okay. Trying to field goal. What's your analysis on this game? How do you see it going, Benji? Well, I think the first one's going to be pretty tight. Um I think if, Newca- uh, if New South Wales can get away to a good start, um, it might put a bit of doubt into the Queenslanders' head and, and let the, the game get away. So it could be a big scoreline in that way. But if they hang in and it's in Queensland and they usually step up when they play in Queensland, I reckon it'd be, be a pretty tight affair all the way to the end. But I reckon the Blues by two, mm. just in a close one. Mm. Who, do you, who do you like, Anthony? I think Queensland will win. Do you? Yeah, I just think Why? up. Well, I mean, we always tip against them. Yeah. And they always front up. They always show up, as as Kenny alluded to earlier. I just think they seem to know Origin better. And it's going to be 99.9% Queenslanders on deck cheering them on in Townsville. It's the old Jack Gibson line, you'll never go broke back in Queensland. Mm. I think New South Wales are $1.55, which yeah. seems incredibly short in a two-horse race. Here's another old Jack Gibson line for you. Yes. There's always free cheese in a mousetrap. Here's another one for you. Mm-hmm. You've got a rowboat brain and a battleship mouth. Moving right along. I'll take that on board. <laughs> you think about that? Oh, yeah. 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 So, boys, uh, in a word, you're taking you're taking New South Wales, tipping with your heart there, I think. Of course. What about you, Ben? Did you say New South Wales? Just by two. Uh-huh. Yeah, you already anyway. painted on. He just said New South Wales. I think we said it about four times today. <laughs> hey, he's just trying Sorry, to prove mate, yeah. about his time around around the that's game. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're doing. You're that's paddling. Let's paddle. Paddle, 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 paddle. <laughs> just keep paddling, boys. Here, let's go. <laughs> I've got your back, mate. I've got your back. And uh, you almost got through a whole shift today, Hoops, without annoying me, but right on full time, <laughs> you had to say, are your ears painted on? Uh, you got to push a few buttons, Anthony. You know that. It's so all you, part of the fun. It's all happening tonight on Fox League on the Big League Wrap. Yep, we'll have it all covered there. Mm-hmm. We've got the great 13th Immortal, Mel Meninga on, Lara Piddle host, mm-hmm. and uh, Mick Ennis there as always. Okay. Great job, Lara. Mm. Really right. enjoyed yeah. what you've done lately, yeah. Mm. Can't wait to hear Mick just talk about himself and 
Around the whole comments. <laughs> That's a bit like working with Maroon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I tell you what, you will be back when, Woodsy? Ah, oh, whenever, mate. Mm-hmm. Whenever you need me. You're just off looking for a, a job. He needs yeah. the cash now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you Good might have yourself. a couple of sausages for him, eh? I'll probably find something for him to do. That's it for us. Thanks to our mates at Sea Do and of course all our friends at Tire Power. Get the power of Australia's biggest independent stock take sale. It's on now at Tire Power as Triple M Rocks Origin.